Michael Simon here. It is five o'clock on a Friday. Um, hope everyone's doing good today. The weather broke a little bit out here. It feels a little spring, so I dressed a little springy. Got out of uh, some of my pajamas and put on adult clothes, but still have on my slippers, so that's good. A lot of you were asking about the apron yesterday. The apron is back. It was just in the dryer during yesterday's class, so no fear. We have the apron. All right, today we are making crispy rice bacon, broccoli, cashews, some eggs if you want it, whatever you kind of have. There's a lot of options here, you guys. You can really have fun with this one. Um, so you can make this vegetarian if you want. You could use different meats if you want. Um, so a lot of versatility here. Once you learn the crispy rice technique, million options. Um, I actually really got turned on to crispy rice, but Bobby Flay does it at some and it's just delicious. You get great texture, a lot of flavor. We're doing this with some rice pilaf that we made a couple days ago that I showed you and is also on um, our 101 section on Instagram. <clears throat> so you can make the pilaf and what I did is I made the pilaf and then just put it in a bag. You can either freeze it or hold in the bag for three, four days, freeze it or hold for months, and then you can make the crispy rice whenever you need it. Uh, so the pilaf recipe is up on my site. Um, I have some bacon. This, this is how we're going to start ours with bacon. Good trick with bacon. You saw me pulled off that cheat tray. Um, when bacon just comes right out of the package, sometimes it's a little bit hard to cut because it gets everything kind of sticks together. Your knife doesn't go through it. It gets a little like slippery. You just get right out of your fingers. If you throw it in the freezer for about 15, 20 minutes, firms up, it's really easy to cut and separate, which makes it easier to cook. So I used a good amount of bacon here, about probably four ounces or so. Um, other lunch meats will work here, hams will work here, um, or if you had like a roasted chicken or something that you wanted to go that version, you could go that version too. But we are going with bacon. I'm gonna put two tablespoons of oil in my pan. Now, those of you that watch me and watch these shows or other shows I do know that I don't usually use nonstick pans. Um, in this preparation, a nonstick pan is going to make life a little bit easier. Is it a necessity? It is not, but will it make life easier? It will. So I am going to cheat or use a nonstick pan here. I'm over medium high to high heat, and we're just going to let this bacon start to crisp. Remember, bacon is already cooked before you get it. It's not a raw product. It's been cured, it's been smoked, or maybe just smoked, or maybe just cured, but it is already cooked all the way through. Um, so now all you're doing is adding the texture you want. The level of crispiness you want to the bacon, that's how much you cook it, but technically you could cut a piece of bacon and eat it, and you're fine. So. That's all up to you. Now, I had a head of broccoli here. I cut the florets very small, as you can see. I'm using broccoli. You can use pretty much any vegetable will work here. Um, carrots would work. Uh, broccolini would work. Parsnips would work. Cauliflower would work. Um, Brussels sprouts would work. Green beans uh, cut up a little smaller would work. And I'm going to actually use the stem, too, in addition to the florets. So all I'm doing with the stem, just with a peeler, I'm just doing it with my chef knife. We're just taking off the exterior skin because it tends to be a little bit fibrous. So that's going to come off. And then we're going to slice this up very thin also. So we use all the broccoli. So this is just going to go as thin as you can get it. You could do this on a mandolin, or even if you wanted to grate it on a box grater, you could do that too. I like to cut it real thin into discs like this because it's going to give it a little bit more texture. Um, if you did it in the box grater, you would add it closer to the end of your cooking procedure. And so, if you were using frozen broccoli, how would this differ? Nothing would change. You would just pull out your frozen broccoli and let it rip. You don't have to let it thaw when you remember if you put something frozen in a pan with a fat though it does when something freezes it takes on a little bit of moisture so when you put it in the pan it will pop a little bit more so just be careful of that but other than that you're good to go 
off. What do we got for questions, Liv? I'm, I'm full of it. I feel this is going to be my best answer day ever on Simon Daily Dinners. I, I That's feel cool. like I'm full today. All right. Um, Aileen is asking if you can talk a little about, about sharpening kitchen knives. Sharpening kitchen knives. So a couple ways you could go about this. Um, I think for the novice cook, the easiest way, you can't do this now, is the local knife sharpeners. A lot of times hardware stores, um, farmers markets, they will be set up and there's usually people there that will sharpen your knives for you. You could probably get it done monthly and you would be more than fine. Um, you could learn how to use a whetstone. Um, they're available online. If you order a whetstone, you could watch classes online on how to use it. That's how I do it. That's how a lot of chefs do it. Um, there are some electric sharpeners that are pretty high quality. Um, my only concern with them while using them is just be careful because sometimes they re really grind down um, your knife and you'll be losing a lot of steel every time and before you know it, your knife will be, you know, this thick. So just be careful with that. But there are some good quality ones out there. Just research them online. Any um, other questions, Liv? A lot of people are asking why you used oil with the bacon. Um, a lot of people are asking why I used oil with the bacon because one, it gets the bacon going. You could put it in a dry pan. I want a little extra fat in here though to start because after this bacon starts to crisp, I'm gonna start crisping up everything else for my rice also. So the extra fat is gonna help that. You could always drain the fat off afterwards, but you need a lot of fat in here. It's almost like you're, um, I mean, we're not stir frying tech, um, but we are almost like, it's almost like you're doing a shallow fry here where you need that extra fat to really kind of crisp everything in it as we put it in. So in goes our broccoli. Mary Beth is asking if she could use cauliflower rice instead of rice pilaf. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cauliflower rice will work fine. We'll do it the exact same way. You're not going to get it as crisp as the rice because there's not starch in there. Um, when you'll see once we do the rice and the rice gets crisp, it's because of that starch that is in your rice that is going to give it that crispness. So you can see my bacon is crisp now. I'm gonna give that a nice toss to work it through so my bacon doesn't burn, but my cauliflower or my broccoli continues to get a little bit of texture to it. It's gonna get bright green, a little bit of texture and cook through. Now at that point, I'm gonna put in my sliced garlic. Again, as always, I'm using fresh garlic, always my first choice. If you can't find it or do not have it, um, you could use a garlic powder or a garlic salt. Also, um, you could buy in this case, I typically don't recommend it, but pre-chopped, pre pre-sliced, pre-roasted, pre-garlic. -pre um, not my number one choice, but we are just trying to get delicious food on the table. For this one. So whatever it takes, this is whatever it takes. What else we got, Liz? Um, a lot of people are asking tonight and have asked before is how you care for your uh, cutting board. How do I care for my cutting board? Um, as you guys can see, this cutting board gets a lot of use. Um, this week, every week, every day. I just, I scrub mine down with soapy water, um, rub it with a little bit of uh, lemon and salt, and then so it doesn't dry out weekly, I oil it up and I'm good to go. And that's it. Um, when you do scrub it with the soapy water, make sure that you get it nice, you know, let it dry. You don't want to soak it, soak it so it warps or anything like that on you, but just some good soapy water will work. Also remember the beautiful thing about wood is wood is a uh, cutting board. Wood is a natural killer of bacteria. So the board really kind of takes care of itself too. Cashews, I just put a rough chop on them. You could, if your cashews are pre-toasted, you could hold off a second to put them in. Um, these are raw, so I need them to get in that fat to toast them a little bit. Again, this is why we needed that additional fat. Something that I had in my fridge, so I'm adding it to the party, but it wasn't in the recipe, is ginger. It's a nice addition to this. Did this the other day, but great way to peel ginger. Spoon, run it right down each part, pulls the skin right off, and your ginger is ready to use. Any more questions, Liv? Um, yes, we do. 
Oh, a lot of people are asking if you could teach them or give them a trick for how you flip the pan that way. Okay. So you want to practice with dry stuff first. I love telling the story when, you know, Kyle's 33 now. But when Kyle was young, he, you know, he would kind of worked in the restaurant, so he would always see us and all the cooks flipping. And we came home one day and there was just stuff everywhere. <laughs> so put dry ingredients in there first, like peanuts um, in a cold pan. And you push the pan away from you, and then you pull it back. So away and back. Away and back. You make it look so easy. Oh, you know, 30 years. It's my one trick. I'm a one trick pony. And if you can't do that, you would just be stirring if this, you right? If you can't do that, you just stir okay. as quick as you can. Here, if you can't do that, you do this. There you go. Everyone can do that. Everyone could do that. Maybe not everyone could do this. Everyone could do this. Oh, I just got a piece of man down. And Julie's um, asking, could she have used a different nut besides cashews? Yeah, any nut would work here. Whatever you have would work good. Um, a great trick with nuts is, you know, everyone always asks, can you freeze this? Can you freeze this? Can you freeze this? Can you freeze this? Nuts freeze better than almost anything. So I kind of always have nuts in my freezer, cashews, peanuts, almonds. I buy them in bulk, a couple pounds at a time, and I just keep them in the freezer and I pull them as I need them. Um, and they don't spoil because the nuts have a lot of oil in them. Um, so they hold up good in the freezer, but you don't have to worry about those oils spoiling. Just great my ginger. Ginger goes in. If uh, Debbie's asking if she froze her ginger, is it still okay to use it? Yes, if you freeze your ginger, totally okay to use, no problem. All right, now. I have a little bit of uh, rice wine vinegar here. This is, you could add, this is when you could add a little bit of acid. I'm using rice wine vinegar. Other vinegars will work. Orange juice will work. Lemon juice will work. Um, and uh, lime juice will work too. You don't want to make that big of a flame at home. It'll scare everybody. Yeah. No biggie. That was just fat and water. Now we're moving that to a pan or a bowl or whatever you need to move it to. I'm gonna turn my heat down just a touch. I'm gonna to grab a paper towel, give my pan a little wipe out. Oh boy, I mess it up my stove. And now let that pan get hot and we're gonna add some fat again to start crisping our rice. I'm, this is, I don't even know, I just found this chosen blend oil, it was in my um, pantry, but olive oil, grapeseed oil, sesame oil would be nice. I would use a light sesame oil if I was doing sesame oil, um, all work. So that oil's getting hot, and now we're going to add our rice to that hot oil. See this when I was on when someone said cauliflower. See how the rice has some starch, that's why it's sticking to my finger, but that's also what's going to give us that nice crust. And if you didn't have ginger, you could use ginger powder instead, sure, right? Ginger powder would be good, turmeric would be good. Um, if you wanted to put some coriander in there, coriander would be good. Uh, you could put all kinds of spices in, all good options. And that's really the beauty of this dish, is that <clears throat> there's so many different things that you could put to it. It's, it's almost like rice and friends. Whatever, you could make it vegetarian, you could make it meatitarian, you could do anything you want to, to customize it to yourself. Um, you could not put, eggs are, it's so funny, like I love eggs, um, but you watch the tonight in comments, when we're looking through comments, people are very, they either love eggs or they hate eggs. Eggs are like cilantro. Very polarizing. Very polarizing was the word I was using before. Wow, you must have went to UCLA. <laughs> Go Bruins. So we're going to let the rice start to crisp. And you could hear it working. So, you know, you just you can take a peek and you're just getting it until it's golden brown. It's still got a little bit of time there. And so you don't really move it around? You don't move it around. Okay. You're just going to let the pan do the work now. So I have four eggs. We're going to whisk up the eggs. 
Now, this is also an opportunity for you guys to have some fun with different flavors. So, we put in the four eggs, some things that I didn't include in the recipe because I want you guys to kind of customize your stuff. To this egg mixture, I have some spicy mustard. If I want some of that flavor, I could put that in there. If I wanted a little bit of hot sauce, you could take your favorite hot sauce, put in a little shake or two. Um, I didn't have soy, but I had some Worcestershire. So if you want to do that, you could put in a couple shakes of that um, into your eggs. So you could put different flavors in your egg mixture. So then when we put in the eggs, that flavor is going to stream through your whole rice dish. Now, you could flip this like how I like to flip, or you could flip it, I'm going to say, not quite yet, or you could flip it with a spatula. I'm going to go for the high style flip. Um, once it's ready. What else do we got, Liz? Um, we have Amy asking, what's the difference between fried rice and rice pilaf? Um, well, rice pilaf is, we made it the other day, rice pilaf is uh, classically done with a long grain rice. Um, it's really not a stirred rice. It's cooked in liquid with a little bit of onion till it's soft and tender and fluffy. Um, and then a fried rice is, you know, they're taking a a rice, and then they're frying it up in the pan. So uh, you could turn pilaf into fried rice. You can't turn fried rice into pilaf. There you go. Um, we have Raheem asking if you could add hot chili peppers. Yes, let it rip. I'm never going to so say no to hot chilies. And you could add different herbs here too. Like we could garnish herbs. You could add some herbs too. You could add parsley, cilantro, fresh mint. Um, all those would work great um, in this preparation. Actually, we ordered some food from the, got some food delivered today, which was nice and I highly recommend. Um, I'm gonna do some scallion that we could finish this whole uh, dish with at the end. Um, so you finish with the herbs? Yeah, well, right at the end. I think, I just like when you go kind of right on top or toss them at the very end, and I think that's where they're gonna work best. All right, I have a feeling the rice is ready. So you can see it's golden brown, it's really crunchy, and that's what we're looking for. So as that other side is crunchifying, I'm going to take my broccoli, bacon, cashew, garlic mixture, or any veg, nut, meats job that you wanted to do here. I'm going to put that on there. Carrie's asking if she could add cheese to this dish. Um, yes, but that would happen at the very, very end. If you try to add cheese in the beginning, you're going to have a mess on your hand. Um, so really wait till you add uh, the cheese. It's not a dish I don't think that needs cheese. Um, and I'm a, you know, even though I'm not supposed to eat it, I'm a lover <laughs> of cheese and I still do eat it. Um, I just don't feel great the next day. But, uh, you know, this is a dish that I really don't think it needs cheese. So, but it, you could certainly put it in. But I'll show you. I would put it in. We're going to put the eggs in next and stir the eggs in. And then we're going to come off the heat after the eggs have cooked through. That's when I would add the cheese. Once you're off the heat, giving it that final stir before it goes on your plate. Um, Jessica is asking if she could use her cast iron for this dish. Cast iron would work, definitely work in this dish. 100%. So if you uh, have a cast iron pan and you want to use it, it would perform fantastic in this situation. I have some cilantro. I'm going to use it. Um, again, not a necessity. These are just like some fun garnishes that, that you could put on to make it your own. It's not going to make the dish or not make the dish. The great thing about this dish for me is you could really bulk it up with more veg and all kinds of stuff and make it a complete meal, or you could have it kind of stand on its own as a side, um, too. Like, if you wanted it to be a side, you wanted to serve it with, say, roast chicken or, you know, a grilled pork chop or some steak or, you know, it would work good in that manner, too. If I was to use this more as a side as opposed to a complete dish, um, maybe I take out the bacon and go heavier on the veg. That's right, Michael Simon said it. <laughs> take out the bacon. All right, 
Um, we have a couple people asking what temperature is the rice being cooked on right now? Um, I, I just turned it down to low. I was on medium high. Okay. All right, so now I'm all the way down to low. I'm gonna take my eggs. I'm gonna pour them over the rice. And we're gonna work them in really quickly so they almost scramble, not almost, they scramble right in that rice. You can see them, they're just kind of cooking, coming together. We have a fan go. asking how long does oil usually last and how do you get it to stay fresh? I mean, I go through it, so I've never had a bad oil go bad on me. I mean, I do use, I cook a lot. Um, keep it in, a, in your pantry in a darker place, in a cool, dark place. It'll last for a long, long time. It very, it's hard for oil to go rancid. Um, you don't want to leave it out in somewhere really bright and hot. That affects it adversely, but uh, you know, you should get a lot of shelf life out of it. All right, so we got our eggs, rice, and again, the eggs are optional for you anti-aggers out there. <laughs> there are a lot of people saying no eggs. No <laughs> eggs! No, not the eggs! Don't do the eggs! Guy Fieri has is, is, uh, affected everybody with their hate of eggs, I think. I mean, to me, the egg is literally God's greatest gift to the kitchen. It, it's a complete protein. It, you could eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It not only is savory, but it helps you make cakes. I mean, there's not much that uh, the egg doesn't do that I don't approve of. But that's me. All right, so we squeeze the lime juice on top. What else we got for questions so I don't burn my mouth when I eat it? Mary and... A lot of people, of course, are wondering where Norman is. Oh, Norman's in a little time out. Norman was a little rambunctious today. You know, he's uh, four and a half months, so he still has his moments. He's having a little time out. He was, uh, uh, you know, social distancing, and <laughs> just hanging in with me, Liz, and Liv all the time. Uh, Norman sometimes gets a little bit crazy, too. Uh, his walk wasn't as long today as typical, so... He's a little feisty today, so he's taking a little time out. He will be back tomorrow. Let's see what we got here. Fun. <laughs> it's just a fun dish because you get you get the crispiness of the uh, of the rice you also get the crispiness of the um bacon in there you get the texture from those uh cashews the broccoli's got some nice flavor i like hot sauce as you could see i put some in when i made it put some more in um and then you know if you have fresh herbs or scallions you get a little bit of brightness from that but they're not a necessity but they're just a nice little brightness could you, instead of scrambling the eggs in, a fan was asking if you could make them sunny side up Yeah, you can put a, a fried egg right on top of this, sunny side, over easy, no problem. Yeah, that's a fun, fun garnish. But that really gets everybody going, no, not the sunny side egg. <laughs> well, I think you guys are gonna love this one. This one is one that you'll make it once, you'll see how easy it is, and it's gonna become part of your regular repertoire, which is great. Um, so, Thanks for joining me today. You could get this recipe on uh, Food Network Kitchen Facebook page. You could get it on my Instagram at Chef Simon with a Y. Um, also my Facebook page and my um, Twitter. And if you want a whole mess of other recipes, the Food Network Kitchen app is up and running. Um, thousands of recipes from all the chefs and talent on Food Network. But I will see you guys tomorrow, 5 o'clock, same time, same sandbox. It'll be Saturday, so just another day at home. <laughs> um, but we're going to get through this together, guys. We're tough. We're strong. One day at a time, one dish at a time. I'll see you tomorrow.